Procreate recently updated to version 5.2 and it gave us the ability to paint on 3D models. Now the one annoyance or the one complaint that we hear a lot online is that you have to bring your own models in with UV coordinates. Now if you don't know what they are then stay tuned and I'll explain them a little bit and I'll also give you an example of how now Nomad, which is our favoured sculpting app, actually got updated yesterday and it gave us the ability to add UV coordinates very very simply. So let's dive right in and have a look at taking models from Nomad to Procreate with UV maps. So we'll just use the basic primitive sphere and as you can see there I've put wireframe on, I'll validate it and that means I can now do anything with it, I can sculpt on it now that it's, it's live and not a parametric object and then it's very simple just to UV map it with a single click. So you come up to the top and you come into this panel here which has now been split into four so you've got multi-res voxel, uh, dyne, dyne topo and then you've got this last one which is UV. In here you've got decimate or decimation and that that will allow you to reduce the polygon count using triangles but we're not going to do that for this first one we're just going to use the sphere as it is so all we need to do is hit this which is unwrap atlas and what that's done straight away is it's given this sphere uv coordinates all the way around now if you've got a model that's already made and you just want uv coordinates that is all you have to do you can now export that and it will actually be usable out of the box like that in Procreate. So we've got a button checked here at the bottom, which is, is basically the, the UV in the background, you might be able to see it, but it's showing you the UV unwrap um, in the background. So if I just change the background color to black, you can see now that it's there in the background. So that's basically taken the sphere and it's opened it up, flattened it, and this is a normal UV routine, and it now allows you to paint on that in other programs. So let's come over to the project menu, top left on mine here, and we wanna to go to export OBJ and make sure we, it doesn't matter if you click any of these others because there's only one object in the scene. It will matter when we get more of them. And we can just export that OBJ as it is. We'll just save it in my files and we'll just call it in my downloads and we'll just call it ball done so that's saved now in that in that folder so we'll switch over to procreate so here's the gallery view in procreate which holds your 2d and your 3d um, files and all you want to do is go to import and ball is the first one that i've got selected there so i just click it it opens up and i get the ball in here very very simple so if i go to the paint use any brush, I can now paint on it. And that's that's as simple as it gets. If you just want to use Nomad to generate some UVs, that's exactly how you do it. And don't forget with Procreate, you come over here to your 3D menu under Actions, and you can see the 2D texture there. So that's how we generate a set of UVs, and it's very, very simple. That is what most people will want to use Nomad for. And for the price of Nomad, it's well worth it just for that feature alone, which basically means that all of your models that you want to use in Procreate now, you can just throw them quickly into uh, Nomad and get a quick UV map um, uh, as simple as that. So let's switch back to Nomad and let's look at a much more complex model. So. I'll open up one that I've been working on lately. So this is Owl from Winnie the Pooh. Um, why I chose this, I have no idea. I just, obviously I love Winnie the Pooh like everybody does. And I've done Tigger too many times. So Owl was the next one I could think of. So it really doesn't matter. I just wanted something that had some complexity to, to try this with. So what I've done here is I've made the character and we've got several components. So I've got outline switched on up here. And that means you can see the component parts um, very simply because I've put an outline, outline around them. So what I've got is a beak, some eyes, the body, which includes the feet, the tail, the wings, everything all in one. I've got an apple at the back, like so. You can see that. And then I've got this at the bottom, which makes things a little bit more complex, which I, I really did want to try this um, and, and see how it goes. So I've got a set of grass, 
which is, I'm about to do a video on how to do this, but it's the same as my hair video, if anybody wants to have a look at that. Um, there is no inbuilt system in Nomad to do hair or fur, so it, it's really just a very manual process. And then I've got some little flowers and I've got a base. So if you switch on wireframe now, and you can see that that's what we're dealing with in terms of the wireframe. So there's no good topology here. We're not we're not using it on a, a, um, a good underlying mesh. We're simply just using the sculpted mesh that, that, that we used as we sculpted it. So what we've got to do if we're going to use that in um, Procreate is we've got to work through it and we've got to bring the polygon count down a little bit before we UV unwrap it. So let me just do one and show you an example. So we'll just take the beak, for example, and I'll put wireframe on. And, and, and you can see the wireframe of every model, but I just want to focus on the beak. So you could just go solo down here at the bottom and all I can see is, is, is the beak. And I'll also turn this background off now because we want to just focus on what we're working on. And as you can see, it's super high, high resolution. And anyone that does know um, UV as well will know that UV unwrapping doesn't work as well the higher the polygon count you get. So let's bring that polygon count down. Um, I'll do I'll do a couple and show you what it, it's like with wireframe on and then off. So under decimation here, you can you can change the settings. Um, one to uh, have a target polygon count. So that means what what you think the number of polygons you want um, would be, and also do you want to preserve the painting? And obviously you do. Um, it doesn't actually matter because we're going to repaint this in. Um, procreate but it you know it, it would be good not to destroy it because it just shows you what the that this is actually what's called vertex painting not texture painting so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and keep that as clean as I can doesn't really matter if you're new at this so don't worry too much about that and then I'll hit decimate and what that's done is based on how um, flat the surfaces are it's tried to bring the polygon count down for me so that's already brought it down to that's 123 vertices now 123,000 vertices so I'll decimate again and it's now down to only 55 so at this point I'll just turn wire off and I'll look and see if it's damaged the look of the model too much and if it if it has then we wouldn't have wanted to do it that much but it's still got the shape it's still got the integrity of the shape so I'll decimate it again so we're now down to only 24,000 and decimate again, and we're now down to 10K, which is still high, but it, we'll, we'll try it at that level and see how we go. So now what we'd like is an unwrap for this beak, and this will be on one map on its own. So we hit auto unwrap. Do you want to confirm? Yes. It'll just take a minute to calculate, and there you go. So in the background, you can see the unwrap, which is messy compared to what we would get out of Blender or ZBrush or Maya, but you've got a very good unwrap done and dusted. So it, it, it will be more than enough. Now, I've got post-processing on here because of, uh, that's how most of my models are. So we can turn that off and that'll stop things like depth of field and, and um, any of the lighting that I had, the, 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 the um, tone mapping or anything like that. So that's it. We've got a nice UV map for that. So let's turn off um, solo. And the reason you're seeing those colours, that's actually a texture map applied to show you that it's UV mapped. And you, you can turn that on and off um, depending on whether you want to show it or not. We want to show it on everything so that we know that everything is UV mapped. So I'll go a bit quicker this time. We'll take the eyeballs. I'm going to decimate them down. That's now 87,000 polygons. That's now 38. That's now 17. And, and to be honest, I, I want to keep them quite high, not, not, not too low. So I'm going to leave that at that and I'm just going to un auto unwrap it. That's that one done, and there's the eyes in the background. So we'll do the body now. Now the body is the biggest part that we've got, so we're going to be careful. So at the moment it's only 370,000, so normally for me I'd be using millions here, and I've kept it quite low for now. So I'm going to decimate it once, and that's 160, and decimate it again, and that's now down to uh, 74,000. So that's still higher than I would ever do a UV unwrap in um the other programs that I use, but I'm going to use it at that level just so that it retains a lot of the shape of the model. So I'm going to do an unwrap and see if it copes with it. Now, that kind of level of unwrap could be a problem in other programs um, because of the, the, the number of polygons, but let's just see if it copes with it. 
and there you go so the the uh, what we call the pelt map is shown in the background so it's unwrapped it even at that ridiculously high level now some programs i work with would struggle with that but it's managed it so the the, the algorithm is is working so well in this in this program i feel um, and we'll keep it at that high re level now. Um, because we've got it at that high level, it's actually retained the, the vertex painting quite well as well, which, um, you know, it's not actually that, that useful for this exercise. But as I said at the start, we'll leave it like that. Now, the, the more complex one, so we'll do the grass. And this is made up of lots and lots of grass blades. So what we're expecting here is something very different, and we're not going to change. Let's put the wireframe on we're not going to change these grass blades at all. We're not going to decimate them down. We're going to see what happens when we do it on something as complex as that. So I'm just going to literally hit unwrap. And let's just see what we get from that unwrap. And what that's given us is this background pattern here. You can see on the UV map in the background, basically every blade of grass has been unwrapped in a single um shape a single island we call it um, and you can see all of the colors on the on the grass now is is a reflection of the uv map so that's worked absolutely perfectly so so that gives me some real confidence about this this program now now we've got some flowers here that are all separate so what you can do is you can just select them all like this so i'm going to go that that's basically all of those flowers there all five of them and we can do a simple merge and that converts them all to, or combines them all to one model. And then from that one model, we can come back across to our UV. Make sure you're on the UV one, you know, the UV setting at the end. And just hit auto unwrap. Yes, and I've not decimated this one because those flowers were low polygon anyway. And there you go, you can see all of the flowers in the background. Each petal has been unwrapped separately and that's because we used a, vo a simple merge and each petal was a separate object merged together with, with simple merge rather than a, um, a, a voxel remesh which merges them completely into one mesh. So that's a great thing to know that you, you, you know if you've got a complex model that's all merged into one it will still retain it like that on one UV map. So that's that one done. And the last one that we've got to do is this base. And I don't really care about the base too much. So I'm going to bring it down to a really low res. So I'm going to bring that down to, let's see how low we can get it. So that's only 6,000 polys now. And it's you can see it's gone a little bit blocky, maybe a bit too much, actually. There you go. That's retaining the shape now. And I'll just unwrap that, which should only take a second. And there you go. Now that's that's made quite a bit of a mess of the base there because it wasn't... Um, it was a cylinder, but we'd sculpted on the top of it. So it's done quite a messy UV unwrap there. So if that if that was something where you wanted to draw decals on it, that wouldn't be ideal. So you would probably stick with something like a standard cylinder where the shapes are quite predictable. But never, nevertheless, it has actually UV mapped it. So we've got two more to do. So I've actually got the, the hands here are a separate piece and they need to be merged into one. So we'll take the hands and we'll take the second part of the hands. We'll do a simple merge. We will you can see how fast it gets now once you, once you get going with this. We'll decimate it down. And again, I don't really care so much about the hands. And we'll do an uh, Atlas unwrap. That's done. And then my favorite, the apple, we'll just do... It's currently at 641,000, which is obviously ridiculously high. So decimate, 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 decimate. We're down to 24, we're down to 11. Let's go really low with this one, lower. So we're down to four there now. So that will do us. And then the apple gets its UV coordinates. And that's it. That's the whole model done now. So we've got a UV unwrap on everything in that model. So what we have to do now is get that into Procreate. So we come over to the export. We'll use OBJ again because GLTF um, is... is probably a better format for coming from other programs because it can carry things like what we call normal maps and, and, and more surface detail. But you would only need OBJ from coming from Nomad. So we'll go export. But before, before we do that, we have to check that you haven't got this button selected here, which is export selection only. You only want 
to check that if you just wanted one of these components to come out. So for example, if you just wanted the base to come out, then you would check that button, which you don't. So we're gonna export that. We're gonna call it same place, save to files. I'm gonna call it owl and we'll give it a number. We'll call it owl 12, done, save him. Might take a little bit longer than before because obviously it's a much bigger model. But let's take a look at that. Switch over to our Procreate. Here we are in the gallery. And you can see where I've done this before, where I've, I've, I've tried it a few times just to confirm that it's going to work. We want to go to Import and we want Owl 12. And there we have the owl. So we've now got all of our normal tools to be able to paint that in Procreate. But there's a couple of things I just want to, to highlight to you, first of all. So if you if you tap on any of the parts that you made, they are now individual selections. So we did, if you remember, we did the beak, we did the eyes, we did the body, the full body, we did the grass, we did the base, we did the apple, and we did the hands. So you've got them all there. So if I was to be working on the grass, for example, I could just drag and drop green for a start just to paint it. If I was working on the flowers, I could just drag yellow for now. Now, I don't want the flower to be yellow completely, so I would paint the stem green, I'd paint the flower yellow, and I'd paint the ball in the center white. But they weren't split separately. If you want them to be separate, then obviously in Nomad you would have to do that. You could take the beak and just do a flood fill. And then you could paint that uh, in the same way as we did with the grass, show the 2D texture and paint it there or just paint it in 3D. We can take the eyes and we'll just drop them as a bluey white to start with. A bit darker than that to make it a bit lighter. There we go. And you could go in and in 3D, you could paint the eyes. So let's go back to a normal brush um, and we'll just paint the eyes. Now this, this highlights one of the limitations with um, this current version of Procreate in that we haven't got the ability to um, paint symmetrically. So if this was a symmetrical model, you would want to be doing those. Um, obviously, you'd want to do both sides at the same time. Um, but, it, you know, we haven't got that just yet. So we're limited to doing it, um, you know, without symmetry. So the rest of the video I'll just do in speed ramp and it's just for a couple of minutes now while we have a chat about what we do next. So obviously the next part is to paint the model up and I'm not going to cover that in this video because it's already long enough but you're probably already uh, an artist and you're probably already using Procreate so you can use all of those Procreate brushes that you're used to now. The hard part or the bit that people have found difficult is getting those UVs on so that you can do this process. So have a go of it, try and get some models and try those UV uh, unwraps in Nomad Sculpt and see if you can get things going um, and working in Procreate 5.2. I will be covering a lot more of this over the next few weeks, so just co come along and watch as I start using the tools in more complex ways and exploring what we can actually get done on the iPad in Procreate 5.2. I hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are, please give them a thumbs up. It does help us to get in front of other artists who might like this kind of content. Please subscribe to the channel. We've just hit a million views and over 20,000 subscribers. So we feel like we've grown incredibly fast over the, over the year that we've been doing this. So if you want to support us, then please look at our courses down below in the description. You can buy all of our courses from our shop. And of course, if you don't want to buy anything or if, you, if you're not in a position to buy anything, then we've got hundreds of videos on the YouTube channel now all for you to, to start learning and for us to help you to create in new and innovative ways.